again, this is going to be, a, a, I think, a, a really big business for the Golden Triangle and surrounding areas over time. All new tonight, Chevron has high hopes for a new project that's coming to Southeast Texas. It's called Bayou Bend. Now, workers plan to capture harmful emissions and inject them thousands of feet underground. It's something called carbon capture. And tonight, we go in depth for a Power City special report to ask two key questions. Why here and why now? Head south from Winnie on Highway 124. The Gulf Coast is blessed with amazing geology. And you'll find prime property. There's a, a ton of capacity right here below our fingertips. This land caught the attention of Chevron. The same type of geology, the same formations that benefited us by providing oil and gas now provide these amazing formations where we can inject carbon dioxide into the ground. So why here? This is a good spot for storage. Absolutely. One of the best spots on the entire U.S. Gulf Coast. Nearly 100,000 acres onshore and 40,000 more offshore. This is thousands and thousands and thousands of feet below any drinkable water supply. But why do this now? It's a scientific fact that the CO2 concentration in the air has gone up. And it sounds insignificant, you're talking PPM levels, but as you model this over time, climatologically, it makes an impact on the environment, and we've seen that uh, all around us. For Chris Powers, this is personal. He's Chevron's Vice President for Carbon Capture, Utilization, and Storage. You know, your family's been involved in the energy industry here for, um, for decades. Generations, yeah. My grandpa was a pipe fitter at uh, Gulf, and, and my dad worked at uh, Motiva, Star Enterprise in the Motiva for many years. The Port Nature's native is helping create Bayou Bend, one of the largest carbon storage projects in U.S. history. It's a joint venture between Chevron, Talos, and Carbonvert. Companies have been managing CO2 for uh, well over 40, 50 years. Only now, it's more urgent. 2050 is sort of a marker year that, that I'll say the collective society has set as a goal when we need to really be trying to turn over the CO2 concentration um, worldwide in the air. Carbon capture involves putting devices on smokestacks at petrochemical plants to store emissions. The concentrated CO2 then gets pressurized, put into a pipeline, and sent to a storage site to be injected. We'll bring out a drilling rig, just like you'd have in, uh, in the traditional business. So we'll drill a well, you'll case off the various zones, you'll move down again to thousands of feet to your target interval, and then you'll have an opening to the reservoir there. Powers says most people won't even realize it's happening. The ranch land will be largely untouched. What has been people's reaction when you first say, we're interested in some CO2 under your ranch land. It, it's it's mixed and varied across across not only the local area but across across the world, right? Because this is a this is a relatively new thing. We in the U.S. are, are seen as a, a a leader in this space. Scott Castleman works with the Houston CCS Alliance, a group of 12 companies pushing the technology. These companies are working together to find ways to advance carbon capture and storage, to create opportunities to continue producing the, the products that, that we're so well known for in the Houston region. He says it's all about working together to cut pollution and reduce the carbon footprint. The Houston region is known globally as the energy capital of the world, and, and we're very proud of that as Texans, and we want to make sure that that continues. It's been shown to be safe. It's been shown to be secure. Dr. Ramanan Krishmurti is a professor of petroleum engineering and chemistry at the University of Houston. He wants you to know whatever gets injected will be carefully monitored. Now, we've done extensive modeling of these things over the last uh, 15, 20 years to know that we can actually safely store it. You're probably watching this and thinking, what's this mean for our economy? People are scared. They are worried about where are the jobs going to be? Are they going to be out of jobs? These experts agree there's no reason to worry. It is actually future-proofing the economy of the United States, of Texas, and the world. Will workers currently in the oil and gas space be able to, to utilize and take advantage of these new job opportunities? And, and the answer to that is yes. The thing that's really interesting to me about it is that by doing this, we're in many ways future-proofing these industries that have really built the foundation for the economy in the Golden Triangle area. Back in Chambers County, Power says it's too early to talk cost or which companies might sign on, but he's confident Bayou Bend is coming. This is good for the environment, it's good for the economy, and it can be done safely and efficiently.
So a couple of things still need to come together on this before construction can start. First, the EPA, the Texas Railroad Commission, they'll both be involved in issuing any permits. And assuming things go smoothly, the offshore part of this could be up and running in 2026. The inland component could follow in 2027. So a ways off. Lots of cool things happening. Lots to watch for too, Jordan. Very neat technology yeah. and uh, lots of potential there. Yeah, we'll keep our eyes on it for sure. All right, let's